Hey everyone, how you doing? I hope everyone is great. I hope everyone is doing well, healthy, hearty, and happy. Today, I'm uh, coming on to discuss it. Uh, well, actually, it was something that was blasted into my mind, into my spirit sleeping that look you need to get this out you need to let the people know what is going on so as you can see from the title we're talking about Galatians 6 verses 6 to 10 well actually it's 6 to 7 but I'm gonna read on to 6 to 10 speaking about people mocking God. Okay. Galatians 6, verses 6 to 10, and it reads, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I can't begin to tell you how many times I have... Kitty, down. How many times I have been recording on this one topic but every time after I'm finished the like you know well those who have the spirit it's like I didn't cover it to the intensity that it needed to have been because it's a broad 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 topic uh, you know when it comes to talking about people mocking God, especially in this century, in this society, the things that are being done, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> and the fact that the verse says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. God cannot be mocked. He is the creator. He has created everything on this planet. You will reap what you sow. So practic pretty much the joke is on you. And all the people who like to put on on television all these fake images and create fake narratives and propaganda to try to erase his existence and the the existence of the Messiah, the Mashiach. God is not mocked. You are only doing yourself a great injustice. And please understand, if this is not you, this doesn't apply to you, please don't take heart to it. But to the ones who continue with the facade and the farce, and those who are easily influenced, and don't think to question a lot of the... the, the propaganda that is being put out there. Jesus said a lot of antichrists have gone out into the world from his days. Here we are in 2017. It is amped up. From his day to now, it is like on 10. So now we have social media. We have the media in general. And they like to continue to push this propaganda 
using symbols of a symbolic nature and and spreading the hate and the devices and the de- the divisiveness to try to get people to believe that God doesn't exist, Jesus doesn't exist, and neither does Satan. So basically making trying to make us look like we're just conspiracy theorists trying to make the gospel seem like we're just a part of people who are just pulling things from just making things up as we go along when it's not so they pull all these images of of Christ and God looking like <laughs> with these like how do you know what he even looked like there weren't even really photos back then but you keep putting up all these images everywhere of what you want people to believe that the Christ looks like the propaganda trying to mock the image of God the fact that God said he created his people in his own image and then they create this standard of beauty in society of what is beautiful and what is not mocking people who don't fit into specific standards of beauty or acceptable um or acceptability in this wicked society. They're trying to, to, to take God out of the, the, the school, trying to take God out of the workplace, trying to take God out of the planet, erase. How, how do you think you're going to erase the creator, though? Like, if we really wrapped our mind around this and think for a second, we are the creation. Even Satan himself is the creation. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. So you as the creation start mocking God and joining in with this other imbecilic, these other imbecilic actions. And you think that you're not going to receive destruction. Look at what happened to the Israelites. The Israelites, God constantly, Yahuwah constantly beckoned to them to change their ways, stop worshiping these false idols, going against his law, his commandments, where he specifically states he is a jealous God. You should not be creating images, any images up in heaven or up on the earth. And he is the only God you need. Why are you creating images to represent him? That is why I'm not even a fan of putting myself out into social media. We don't know what God looks like. Just like his presence is there. His word is there. The message is there enough for those who have faith and believe in him and see the power come through from not only that, but also his Holy Spirit, which all we don't even know what he looks like in revelations in parts of the bible we get a depiction of what he might look like but all these fake images that are circulating to put in your mind to brainwash you and condition you into get having a specific idea of what he should look like what the savior should look like to lead you down the path of destruction for which, dare I say, you will be worshiping the image of the beast. Yes, I said it. You will be worshiping the image of the beast. I'm telling y'all, read Revelations. Revelations was the first book of the Bible that I read in total. A lot of people used to say, man, I'm scared of Revelations. They don't want to read it. It's like, you know, scarier than a Stephen King novel. But I felt so, like, 
free, so inspired, so motivated when I read Revelations. And every time I read, read it or reread it, I would always get something new from it. Understand, God said not to create any images. At the time, the Israelites, they had all these, they, they were making, um, they were worshiping idols. They were creating idols of things and of people, of God's own creation. And worshiping the creation instead of the creator. I don't say the creature because that's a whole different thing, but the creation, that's what we are. Satan is the creation. So all these people who are talking about, oh, I, you know, they worship themselves or they worship Lucifer or they worship demonic spirits. It's just, it's counterproductive and it's, it's really just, it's low thinking. You're not excelling. You're not, you're, God gave you this wonderful brain, this powerful, powerful brain for you to use for you to decipher nonsense from truth. If Lucifer was all powerful and he could do the things that he, you, uh, a God would do, come on now. Do you think he would have to be, he would take this long and have to be so sneaky in his dealings? When you don't do what you should be doing in terms of your calling and the mission and the assignment that you have been given as as a, a, a person that, that that is a part of the kingdom, you have been assigned to continue to spread the gospel, to continue to help the poor, the needy, people who cannot help themselves, people who cannot pray for themselves, intercede in prayer, standing in the gap. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some people who abuse their situation there are some people who like to straddle the fence they don't want to to get too deep into christianity they don't want to get baptized they don't want to repent because frankly you know people know once you get close to god and you go back into like a dog goes back to his vomit you're gonna be worse off than than a person who never knew him so they want to straddle the fence and use your anointing. So con I had people who con continuously, you know, they want me to pray for them and their situation, even though, you know, it's like, okay, it's the same situation. Go to God yourself. That's what I had to do. Nobody prayed for me. My mother didn't even pray for me. My family always designated me. I was a designated prayer person. Anytime it came to, uh, when it came to the, the meal, Sunday meal, or whatever occasion we had, I was the designated prayer person. And don't get me wrong, I love it. Blessing the food, blessing the hands of the cook, all of that. But I never saw them, you know, reach out and, and pray over anyone. I'm, I'm not saying that this is something you should, you know, there are times when it's between you and God, but then there's times when it's like, you know, you got to pray over your children. And coming from a family of narcissism and narcissistic people, it's like pulling teeth with them because they are so filled with their, their uh, pompousness, pride, arrogance, and belief in self, they don't really, because narcissists don't care about anyone else but themselves. And by narcissists, I mean, these people who are narcissistic are people who are embedded or it filled with demonic entities. You can see it in their eyes, but, and in their countenance. But as I was saying, there are people who abuse or try to abuse your anointing by every time they keep coming to you. You don't need to keep coming to me or you don't need to keep coming to your pastor. You can go directly to God. That is why Jesus, the Yahushua, came to earth so he could become your adversary. He fulfilled the law so you don't longer have to go to no priests or no 
pastors or no bishops. You go directly to God through Jesus, through Jesus Christ, through Yahushua HaMashiach. You go directly through him in Jesus name, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is who you go through. You can't keep pray for, I will pray for you. We do have people who are natural intercessors, natural burden bearers, not people who are continuously praying, but it comes a time when you will have to answer for your life. You will have to be held accountable for your life. When you get to heaven on judgment day, you, when God asked you about your life, I can't answer for you. The Pastor can't answer for you. You can't say, I, my actions were based on what my pastor told me. That lack of accountability, that's what happened in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve's lack of accountability, they started turning on each other. They never took accountability for their own actions. They both went ahead and sinned and disobeyed God's direct order when he said, do not, do not eat from that tree. And he diso it was the disobedience and the lack of accountability and a chain of other things that kept on going down after that. You will have to hold yourself accountable for your actions. You can't keep coming to, to the prayer warriors and the, yes, they can help you in prayer if you feel you're weak in that area and you need it. But it comes a time when you have to pick up your cross, pick up that mantle, get baptized so you can be a part of the kingdom. Because the Bible says that when you are baptized, that's how you are saved. That's how you will enter into the kingdom. Okay? So until you start understanding that nobody else is responsible for your salvation but you, you will continue to live defeated. You will continue to disobey and you think you're mocking God by being sneaky and secretive and going in the dark doing your things and loving the things of the world and continuing to worship and be enticed by by sinful by the sinful things and the sinful nature that 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 you're upholding and you don't think God knows? Are you serious? You going you going to stop disrespecting my father. <laughs> you going to have to stop that now. Come on now. Even though it's not even a disrespect to him per se because you're really just disrespecting yourself. You're setting yourself up for the fall. Everybody's gonna have to answer. I'm gonna have to answer for for my actions and my inactions when he tells me to act. When he told tells you to act, he wants you to come come to him, and you decide that you're just gonna continue on doing what you're doing. Cause I keep I look. I keep talking to my family. I know I, a lot of y'all relate to me or relate with me on this topic. I keep talking to them. It's like beating a dead horse. It came a time when I just had to separate. And, you know, God, let God do his work. I've already said what I have to say because the Bible says, you know, go to, you go to different nations. You preach the, the word. Those who accept you, you come in, sit, you eat with them. Those who don't, you leave from that place. <laughs> they're not accepting what you're giving them, then you got to separate. You got to trust the process. You pray about it, trust the process. Some people, they want you to stay in there so they can drag you down, but you got work to do. You got other people who need this gospel. You got other people who need to hear and feel and experience the power of the Most High Yah. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to keep towing the line, and I'm not talking to y'all who, you know, y'all are already there. I'm talking to the other ones who think that they can outsmart the creator, the potter. He's the potter. We are the clay. He formed you. He knew who you would be before you were formed in your mother's 
womb. You really think that you can outsmart the creator. <laughs> God laughs at you. He does. I remember I'll be praying in the spirit and and the things that <laughs> just laughing at the fact that y'all think that you're going to have one over him. Foolish people. Foolish. It really is. You cannot keep expecting God to work on your behalf. Because I've got a lot of people who say, you know, well, I, I try to fast and I try to, I'm, I don't know your case specifically. I told you that I got baptized in 2000. I have been trying, but I wasn't trying hard enough until the situation happened. I'm not saying everybody's situation is the same. Because even um, I had issues, I thought I couldn't even speak in tongues because I was going to church and people or pastors were telling, oh, no, not everybody's, not everybody's gifts, only some gifts, some people. Yes, some people have that naturally. Some people were born with specific gifts, gifts as well. But when the gifts of the spirit, he gives you these and he gives you them. He's, they said, why would the Bible say you need to pray and ask for these gifts if, if it's only for specific people? You know, the, it's a lot of common sense as well when it comes to, 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 to life and, 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 and things like this. The Bible says to be doers of the word. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And this is taken from St. Matthew 7, verse 21. He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And we're talking about some of these uh, churches, some of these pastors, some of these the wolves in sheep clothing who have been given, who have been given God, Yahuwah's precious jewels to watch over to guide over and have instead set them up for slaughter, sent them into the world with wrong information, helped to condition them in a way that God would not have put his stamp or his seal on, sold out to the enemy in order to take down Yahuwah's prized possessions. Led his people like lambs to the slaughter and continue to do this because they are telling you and preaching to you the wrong doctrine, false doctrines, talking about building up wealth on this planet. When let's read revelations. This is not a forever set up. This is temporary. We are just passing through. So you over there telling people to build up wealth on this earth and telling them about reaping the harvest or, or sowing the seed and giving them the wrong information. Best, I went to a prosperity um, church for a short while. And I never felt fulfilled in that church. Every time the pastor would always, some way, somehow, find a way to deter, I wouldn't say deter, divert to something about building of wealth, about money, about prosperity. And it's like that wasn't filling my spirit. I still, there was a, still a lot of things that I don't understand why it wasn't being addressed. I couldn't understand who are these people in the Bible? Who are these Gentiles? Who are these Israelites? Who are these heathens? Who are these Moabites? Who are these Canaanites? Who are these people in the Bible? You're not telling me this. 
you always somewhere somehow manage to go off on a tangent about money and living my best life. I threw away a lot of these motivational books by pastors. They weren't feed they were feeding my spirit and feeding it poisons. Or they or they weren't feeding it at all. They were starving it. Unless you read the word for yourself, you won't understand what I'm talking about. They don't touch on a lot of the things in the scripture. And uh, y'all, when I first started reading the Bible, I was so confused. I would read Genesis and I'm like, okay, so we skip from there on to, okay, okay, Cain and Abel. And then after that, you know, Cain killed Abel. And then all of a sudden it goes on to, he went and married people. Where the rest of people came from? Like, I was so confused. I gave up on the Bible. I was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this. And as I continue to progress, I understand why books of the Bible have been taken out. That explains a lot. I, I used to wonder who was Enoch? Who is Enoch? I'm sorry. I know I went off on a tangent. I used to wonder who is this guy only had like one sentence or something on him. And he was loved by God. I was like, I want to be like him. But there's nothing else. How did he get to where he got to? How was I supposed to know? There's a whole book on Enoch. <laughs> so I did get frustrated. But best believe, though, there's still a lot of truth. God don't leave us. He still gave us enough for what our enemy thought that he was trying to set us up when he gave us the, the Holy Bible by picking and choosing certain things to oppress some people. Y'all know what I'm saying? But who knows? Y'all who know God, God finds a way. He makes a way. He will let your enemies, wink, wink, bring you into your destiny. Amen. So, yeah, I, I, that's a lot, but these, these shepherds, these falls, wolves in sheep clothing, they're not falls, but I'm just talking about these falls, pro, pro, uh, prophets, falls, giving false doctrines, these, these pastors more focused on materialistic things on building up their wealth they don't even care about the people anymore i mean we have seen this with our own two eyes and i'm not talking about all pastors if it applies who the cap fits wear it but i'm not in church right now i have had the hardest time you don't need to stay in the field some people continue to stay in it because he, the pastor is leading you astray and he's feeding you with poisons and telling you, you don't need to stay in that and continue. You get up and you leave because your spirit, whether you know it, is going to be affected. It it then becomes witchcraft. And they're over there working spells on you in that church while you sit down and you tolerate it. You wonder why, you know, you over there going up for altar call and they're talking about all these blessings. You walk out the next day and you go to work and your whole life gone to hell. But I went to church, though. I just got my blessing. They're not teaching you the right things. They're not teaching you the ways to prepare yourself for that day, for for for, for your day when you have to go to work or you got to got to go up against people who are influenced by demons, people who are possessed by lesions. Come on now. When Jesus got here, there were a lot of demonic possessions. He's not here anymore. And we don't really even see deliverance ministry like we, we used to. So what do you think? You, what do you think you're talking to sometimes when people say some things and you're like, what? Or people are doing things, mocking God, talking about God don't exist. Neither did Jesus laughing at you for your faith. Trying to make you feel you need to stand upon the word. Study to show yourself approved. When these people come up against you. you 
The Bible says you need to you need to be able to answer to these people when they ask you about your faith. Why you believe in God? I believe in God because I have no choice but to believe in my creator. He created me. Only he can give me the answers that I need. No man, no woman, no board, no wooden idol, no money, no God, no, no. And I mean, God in lowercase, not the prince of this world, not no demonic entity, not no psychic, not no sorcerer, not no Obia man, voodoo man, none of those people. The God who is still on the throne, the God of my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise his name. Bless his holy name. Bless the name of the most high. Yah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Don't come and tell me about who I should worship. Because my faith doesn't apply to you or, or, or you want to demonize me. Because you don't understand why I feel the way I feel about my father, my heavenly father. I'm not going to tell you who to believe in. Nobody should force you to, to, to worship whoever it is saying. God does not force us to worship him. The devil, he does. I, look, I, look, if I, I could tell y'all about my experiences. Hmm. He doesn't force you. He doesn't. Jesus didn't let the people pay money when he got here. He had an assignment. He had a mission. When he preached the gospel, he didn't tell. He didn't. He didn't post his disciples at each corner with uh with an offering bag. To you make sure you collect. The, did I? I don't even tell y'all. I went to a prosperity church and they locked the door. Locked the door on us on a Tuesday church, t Tuesday Bible church, a very popular prosperity preaching church too. Locked the door. I had to go to work. My type of job that I was in, it was one of those where I cannot be late. I cannot miss a day, period. So I had to go home early when the church was over. All I know, they were collecting offering. And when we were about to leave, there were some people who gave and people got up and it was time to go. And this, it wasn't the, the, the pastor. It was the person who the pastor left in charge who decided that we needed to dig deeper. We needed to dig, 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 dig deeper into our pockets. And put some more in that offering plate. And I was like, <laughs> why? This is why I got out the church, y'all. I did go to a deliverance ministry, but I don't go for a long time. Because when you have the spirit of discernment, you can tell. Because those were experiences that I need. Experience is the best teacher. That stuff, that love of money, them leading you astray. And being focused away from God onto other things that they shouldn't be focusing on toes the line or pretty much goes all the way over to, to witchcraft and sorcery. So they're over there putting all this, you know, things on you because their preaching is no longer about God. It's more about prosperity. It's more about the God of this world. It's more about uh, idols and because and people made money their idol. People are making people their idol. They're over there worshiping in, in people in government. They're over there worshiping flags. They're over there worshiping sports teams and sports. That's their God. And you think for a second that because you have turned some people who don't quite know the truth. This is why they need for us to still preach. Even though some of us, we feel like we're just beating a dead horse, you still got to get that word out because people are waking up. 
And when they wake up, they're going to need your testimony. They're going to need your word out there, your gospel, you spreading the gospel for the, to fill up their mind after being conditioned from whatever, because they're still waking up and they're going to need something to fill them up, fill them up. They're going to need the word. They're going to need the word to recondition their mind. We are living in a day and age. It, it It's just people substituting anything you substitute for God becomes an idol. And people like to laugh it off and ha 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 make it into a comedy. The joke's on you. God is not mocked because he cannot be mocked. You're mocking yourself. They only fool you into thinking that you are, but come on now. Let's be all the way real. You're the only one that is going to have to deal with the consequences of your actions when you get to judgment. And Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew you. Workers of iniquity. He knows you. He knows every single one of you. He knows your mind. He knows your thoughts. You cannot lie to him when you walk up there and think you, the way you lie to people on this earth. He is not from this earth. So when you think that you can get over on the most high, you're only fooling yourself. Israelites are still suffering from their refusal to come back to God when he called them. Yeah, I know. I know who the Israelites are. You do too. His people. There are people who God loves and there are people who God hates. Yes, you can all be saved. I do believe that. But he is coming back for his people. All of you who, you know, participating in this mocking and keeping the truth from God's people think you're hiding the truth in plain sight. Think you're getting won over in God. You are seriously deceived. You're not deceiving anyone but yourselves. You're only doing yourself a great disservice and reaping, you're gonna reap what you sow. You're, you're pretty much heaping destruction on your own head. They said you you sow into the flesh, you're going to you're going to reap things of the flesh, corruption, destruction. You sow into the spirit, you're going to sow things of the spirit such as life everlasting. Sow good seeds. Tell the truth. You keep hiding the truth. And playing these games, like the games sociopaths play, who are also demonically possessed, might I say. You keep playing these games, and you think you won't have to answer for it. You keep fooling other people who don't understand. You follow along with these corrupted minds. They all will have to answer it for it. It will come a day when the synagogue of Satan will have to confess who the real Jews are. You will have to confess the, the, the farce and the deception that has been put on the world. Don't laugh along with the world. Get serious. Serious about your walk. Get serious about getting to know the most high. Get serious about getting close to him because he comes close to you when you have a broken heart and a contrite spirit because at that part, you humble yourself. God is not about, he can't come near to people with pride. I can't do it. 
People with pride and arrogance repel me. It repels my spirit. You think you know it all. The people who know it all and, and, and they have a say on everything about your belief and their belief and his belief and her belief. Don't get led astray. Don't join the mockery. People who who are trying to tear down God's creation to make it seem as if he didn't create everything perfect in his image. Trying to make, he created man, he created woman, and then you try to turn things upside down and make it seem like, um... Woman, you were supposed to be a man, and man, you were supposed to be a woman. No. Those are spirits inside of you. And they need to be cast out, and that's why we need more people in deliverance ministry. You can keep on saying, oh, well, you know, people are mental, mentally ill. I, I can't. I'm, I'm getting too deep, y'all. I'm getting too deep. Woo! If we don't, if we're not going out and fighting this fight and you're too scared, I have people telling me I'm so scared. Remember I talked about fear. Only fear you need to do have is a fear of God. And that, that, that type of fear is a good fear. That's a healthy fear. You fear God, he will work on your behalf. Who else? All I know is the only person, the only, all, God in my corner is an amazing, awesome, wonderful thing. The creator in my corner is all I need. Jesus came one, by himself. <laughs> he did all these marvelous things in my book, the greatest man to ever walk the planet. Was the Mashiach, the Messiah. The greatest to ever walk this planet. And only he can come and tell me right now that I'm wrong. My beliefs are wrong. I have no, I'm not believing in man. Man has led me astray so many times. By man, I mean man, woman, all the things, the people who I see around have shown me that they don't have my best interest at heart. They continue to hurt me. They continue to set me up. I can help you, but only I keep, and I keep coming back to you, and I keep, and you keep stabbing me in my back and showing me who you are. The only person who has ever had my back, the, and he's not even a person, he, he's, he's an entity, he's God. Is him. And he's all I need. Amen. I'm sorry if I rambled on y'all. I just wanted to, to address this topic. I've had this topic to, to have released like a couple months ago. But I just, I sat on it. Because I felt like I was not able to really touch on it the way that, but you know, I follow the, the inkling, I follow what it is that I have been led to do. And I'm sorry if you don't feel that I did this topic any justice, but by the leading of the Holy Spirit, this is what I have to say. And... I just want to encourage you all to continue in the fight, continue in your walk, continue, never give up as long as there is breath in your body, fasting and praying, getting closer to God. I'm not saying fasting and praying is the only, it's, it's a weapon in our art, like in our arsenal. It is just like Satan has weapons and tricks. Fear, using the spirit of fear, using the spirit of jealousy, envy, deceit, lies, just like he has, so has God also given us 
his spirit and his weapons to fight back and win. You have to have faith. A healthy dose of the fear of God. If somebody don't fear God and they're walking around like they're a God, separate from them. That cannot end well. There is only one God. And he is still on the throne. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, be blessed. Until next time, I love you.